everyone, so I'm back for a very belated video. Now that I'm almost done with this IVF success pregnancy, I'm finally getting around to doing an IVF tip video for all of you guys. So these are uncommon tips. I watched so many videos before going through IVF myself, and these are tips that I didn't really hear anybody else talking about, and if they did, I kind of have modified them a little bit so you're not just hearing the same thing over and over and over again. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, the first thing is, the first tip I have is if anyone asks, like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, can we do anything for you? I would say don't be afraid to ask people to, like, bring you food. That was the biggest thing I definitely noticed is IVF was a lot harder on my body than I thought it would be. I knew it would be tough, but it was like a very difficult recovery for me after egg retrieval. Um, I know part of it has to do with the fact that I have endometriosis, so everything was a little bit rougher down there. Um, and I definitely had a tough recovery, and I had a tough week leading up to egg retrieval because I got super, super bloated. I was borderline OHSS. If you need to look up what that is, go for it. I won't explain it because it's a long explanation. Um, but that was the biggest thing is I wish people, you know, like usually if you have surgery or something like that, usually people will like, you know, bring you food or whatever. And it's funny because it was IVF and I think a lot of people don't realize that that is surgery. Um, people don't realize like how wonderful it would be if people brought you food <laughs> because what wound up happening is I was surprised by how tough it was. And I had made a couple things ahead of time, and I had some frozen meals, but we just wound up eating a lot of junk food because I was not up to it at all. The last, like, five days before my egg retrieval, I was so sore and uncomfortable that I really couldn't get off the couch. Like, it was, I mean, I'm at the end of my pregnancy, and IVF was much harder than pregnancy for me. So, I mean, not to scare you guys if you're going through IVF, um, I was a different situation because of everything. Um, but definitely it was a lot harder than I thought, and I think you guys should prepare for that. And if you have a friend going through IVF, then bring them food. Like, I just, I wish that instead, I mean, we have a lot of, like, food places around us, but I really wish, like, someone had brought me some, like, you know, homemade meat sauce and spaghetti or something, you know, or some, like, homemade mac and cheese, or even some craft mac and cheese would have been good. Um, just thinking randomly here, anything would have been awesome because we just wound up eating a lot of fast food. And that was not really ideal, especially because like when you're that uncomfortable and that bloated, like eating that much salt just isn't great. Um, and so it was really tough eating that much fast food. And I just wish like someone had been like, hey, how are you doing? Can I do anything for you? And I would have been like, bring me some mac and cheese <laughs> or something. I keep using that as an example, but I just mean in general, it doesn't have to be fancy, but um, I just think it's funny because like after you have a baby or when you have surgery, everyone does that. Um, and with IVF, like no one really knew what to do. <laughs> and so I just wish someone had done that. And that was my biggest thing is I was just kind of like, you know, no one knows what to do. <laughs> and so if you have a friend going through that, keep that in mind. And if anyone asks you, make sure you tell them that and make sure that you are prepared with food that a partner can make because I couldn't get off the couch and I had made food that was more complicated than, than it was worth explaining to my husband how to prepare so it didn't really help me a whole lot. So my other tip going off that is show your husband where everything goes and where everything belongs. Now before we did IVF I reorganized our whole condo. It was kind of this whole like I don't know if you guys have heard of like the KonMari method but I went through and did a whole big purge and got everything really organized so that it was really easy for me to just kind of go through IVF. So I did that, but then the problem was I didn't necessarily tell my husband where everything went again. So I ran into the issue of if I needed Tylenol or whatever, I had to explain to him where the Tylenol is now kept. And that was a big pain in the butt. Um, and my husband is amazing. Like I'm making him sound like he can't do anything, but it was totally my fault. Like I should have explained where I put everything new. We've lived here for a year and he kind of got used to where I was putting stuff. So that was definitely important. And I'd say just make sure your family knows where everything goes and where everything is or make it really obvious because I definitely think when I was stuck on the couch and I was miserable, um, it was definitely 
like hard to have to explain something and if I didn't know 100% where it was like you know how there's things where you're like oh it's under the bathroom sink but it's kind of in one of the drawers just look at all the drawers like you know I didn't want to have to get off the couch I was really really uncomfortable and so I definitely wish I had like shown my husband where everything is or I even considered doing this and I wound up not doing it but I kind of regret that is I wish I had gone through with my little video camera and just gone through every room because we only have a couple rooms in our condo <clears throat> and just like made a little video about where everything that was important was because that way if I needed to I could look back on that video and be like this is where we keep the Tylenol now <laughs> like it's not in this location anymore it's in this one because this one made more sense and I don't have to get up to look for it I can watch a video to see so I know that sounds a little excessive but that's definitely something I would have done if I did it again the other thing that I think was super important and if you guys watch my how I prevented OHSS video you can go ahead and do that too there is a link down below with our IVF playlist it's in there um, it's also on my channel somewhere <laughs> if you want to go find it but anyways uh, definitely something I did a lot of research on was OHSS because I was at risk for it um, before I even did IVF I knew that I was at risk so I wanted to make sure I looked up everything I could about how to prevent it. A lot of people swear by Gatorade and coconut water, and I do think those are important. But in my research, the thing that was most important was protein. And I can't stress this enough because, again, when you're done with IVF and you're sore and you're uncomfortable and you don't want to make yourself food and you're eating junk, you're not getting enough protein. <laughs> More than likely you're not. So what I did is I bought a whole bunch of protein shakes, I bought protein powder, and I, like, pre-made powdered drinks like I pre-mixed them with water and shook them up and blended them up and put them in water bottles in our fridge literally ready to go and I had those all set up um, before we did IVF and I was super on top of drinking my protein and I didn't get OHSS I was so close and I didn't get OHSS and so I was so grateful for that so guys make sure you use your protein powder I'm not talking about eating lots of protein that's good too but I definitely think when I wasn't feeling good and I couldn't really eat a whole lot and I, it just, I was uncomfortable, the protein powder was really important because I was able to at least do that. My next big tip, guys, is to buy yourself some Tylenol liquid gels. Not regular Tylenol, the liquid gel kind. Because when you're going through IVF, you aren't allowed to use any painkillers at all. And by painkillers, I mean like over-the-counter stuff for headaches or whatever. You're not allowed to use anything except for Tylenol. And if you're anything like me, when I was going through my suppression phase where I had to take certain medicines that notoriously give you headaches, I was getting a headache every single time. And sometimes they were so bad that I would like throw up from the headaches. I know I'm making this sound horrible. I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to stress you out. I just had a lot of side effects. Um, so I learned that if I took liquid gel Tylenol, the reason why I say liquid gels, I just feel like they work a lot faster. And you can certainly get the generic, like a acetaminophen, but definitely liquid gels. They work a lot faster, in my opinion, than the regular capsules. Um, and so what I would do is before using my Lupron shot, which is the thing that gave me the headache, um, before doing my Lupron, I would take two regular strength liquid Tylenol gels half an hour before doing that, and then I wouldn't get a headache. And if I did, then I would usually be able to take some, I think it's like you can take it every four hours, so I would just take it later on too. But generally speaking, if I took it half an hour before my Lupron shot, I never got a headache. And I loved that they were liquid gels so that they worked a little bit faster. Um, and in general, um, if I needed anything else for pain, then I would take that as well, because at the end I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, some information about Lucky Socks, guys. So a lot of people do like this Lucky Sock tradition where they wear special socks for IVF or for transfers or whatever. And at my major hospital, so as you guys know, we went to Mass General in Boston, which is like a big conglomerate hospital. They have a lot of rules and regulations there. Is because it's a sterile environment in the OR, they would not let me wear my Lucky Socks bare. So I actually had an amazing nurse, and what she let me do is wear my lucky socks and then wear their sterile socks over them. So you can bring your lucky socks if you go to a hospital or whatever. Um, just make sure that you, you know, if they say, oh, you can't wear those in here, just say, can I just have a pair of the sterile socks to wear over them? So that's the tip. <laughs> my other tip is try not to do too much, guys. I thought I would be 
you know, bored during the time that I had to take off because I take some time off from work to do IVF because um, I have a very active job and I wasn't allowed to lift anything. So I had to take a little time off and I thought, oh, this will be a great time to like see people or spend some time with friends. And that was totally unrealistic. I was really uncomfortable. I had to cancel plans and I know no one really cared, but I felt bad. And the couple of times I did go out and hang out with people, I instantly regretted it. Like it was not fun at all. And I just wish I hadn't been so unrealistic with what I was expecting my body to go through. So just be easy on yourself, be gentle on yourself for IVF. The other tip I have is heating pads. Oh my gosh. So right before our egg retrieval, and immediately after egg retrieval, I had such a sore abdomen. So, 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 so sore. And the only thing that really helped me was heating pads. Because again, the only thing you're allowed to take is Tylenol. Which, in retrospect, is a little crazy to me. If I do this again, I might ask for something stronger for after egg retrieval. Like, you had needles up my JJ, and you're just saying, oh, Tylenol's fine. Seems a little crazy to me. But anyways, if I go through it again, now I understand. Um, but anyways... I was super uncomfortable. The only thing that worked for me was a heating pad. And so the best advice I have for you guys is get yourself a really good quality. I got one from Etsy and it's a wheat berry pad and it works better than rice, holds heat a lot longer. And what's nice is you can just microwave it and like use it at nighttime. And if you fall asleep with it on, it's not a big deal because it's not like an electric heat pad that'll stay on forever. It's just warm and it eventually cools off. Um, so I did that all the time when I was going to sleep. And then for when I wasn't, when I was awake and I needed like longer heat or stronger heat, um, what I would do is use a heating pad. And then we also bought an adapter for the car that was literally a, like it plugs into the port and then it has an outlet. So I, I got it on like Amazon or e eBay or something. And so I could plug in the heating pad and we used that on the way home from the egg retrieval. That was my brilliant idea. That was all me. I, I don't, no one told me to do that. Um, they just said, use a heating pad as soon as you can right away. And I was like, I'm going to bring it with me. And I did. And it was so worth it because after egg retrieval, I was really uncomfortable. And so I was so happy to have that nice hot heating pad on my drive home because we live about an hour away from where we did the egg retrieval. The other advice I have is to get yourself a teething bracelet. So uh, this is something that you don't have to use when you're teething. Uh, it became famous, an amber teething necklace or bracelet or whatever, became really popular uh, recently and it's used for little kids when they're teething. It has some natural stuff in it that helps to relieve pain and can also reduce some swelling. So instead of using a necklace, I got a bracelet and I wore that pretty much the whole time we went through IVF and I think it did help a little bit with the reducing the pain and the swelling. The other big tip I have for you guys is meditations. Oh my gosh, so important. Um, studies have shown basically the more relaxed you are during IVF, the better it works. A lot of it is mental attitude, guys. I hear so many people going through this and they're so pessimistic. It's okay to be realistic and optimistic. I think that is exactly how I live my life. I was told, and I did my research, that we had about a 33% chance of this working. And I knew that going in. I was realistic, but I also told myself, this is going to work. I'm going to get pregnant. Everything's going to be fine. Um, it did work, just barely, and <laughs> we got 18 eggs and only one blastocyst made it. Uh, and that's our baby, <laughs> but um, so, but I think it's important to stay optimistic, even if you have to be realistic at the same time. People think if you're optimistic, you're always going to be disappointed, but I like to say, if you're realistic and optimistic, then it's okay. Like, you can expect the worst, but hope for the best is kind of the way I live my life, and so I think that's important. And then uh, I got these amazing meditations from a friend, actually, but it's this uh, company called Circle and Bloom. And they do pregnancy meditations, IUI meditations, and IVF meditations. Uh, I think they also just do regular TTC med uh, meditations. But it was so wonderful and so relaxing, and I followed it to a T. And it really helped me to keep my eye on the prize and to relax. Um, I also did acupuncture a couple times during IVF, and then before and after my egg retrieval, and um, or, no, before and after my <laughs> my transfer my embryo transfer, because it's kind of shown the more relaxed you are for embryo transfer, the higher chances of success. So acupuncture, meditations, those are all great things to help you have a baby, get pregnant. The other last piece, 
big advice I have for you guys is get yourself some not obvious maternity clothes. I swelled up so much from IVF and it was all in my like super lower belly because it was my ovaries that swelled up huge and everything was really uncomfortable. I actually wound up buying maternity underwear that I now use during maternity, <laughs> during pregnancy. Um, but you can get yourself some non-obvious maternity clothes. Like it doesn't have to have like the stretch elastic on the side or any like obvious like, you know, pregnancy thing, like, I'm pregnant. Um, but definitely just get yourself some, like, nice sweatpants. Get yourself maybe, like, one pair of jeans with, like, a either a roll-down or a tummy panel or something like that. Something that has some give and stretch to it. Because my lower belly got so sore. It wasn't just, like, big. It was sore. And it hurt to the touch. So definitely, like, anything tight or restrictive was really uncomfortable. And on that note, get yourself some nice nightgowns because... No matter what I did, I could not find comfortable pajama pants for myself. Now, pajama pants, pajama pants, you think, oh, those are really comfy, but think of where they hit you. They're hitting you right, like, low on your ovaries. <laughs> and and when you're, like, moving in your sleep or whatever, you, like, kind of twist around. And sometimes the pants get, like, twisted around you in an uncomfortable way. And I would wake up so uncomfortable, guys. So... I gave up and I went to nightgowns and I only have like a couple um, so I wound up going and like buying myself some more some nice soft ones and that was such a good investment and then I wore them all through my pregnancy too <laughs> so um, and then in terms of like non maternity like maternity clothes you know you can just get some looser fitting shirts that are still flattering. I actually went to Savers, which is our local thrift store, and I went through the maternity section and I just found things that I thought were cute and that worked and, um, you know, weren't like super, didn't scream, I'm pregnant, because I wasn't. <laughs> I was going through IVF. Um, and just some like nice loose fitting tops and again, maybe some pants with a belly panel. Uh, I'm a nurse and so I bought some maternity scrub pants before I was pregnant and I wore those because I was so uncomfortable that anything tight around my lower belly was really not fun. So that's, those are all my tips for you guys. Um, the other thing that I would say is important, but I feel like a lot of people have or have heard, is to definitely hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And that's uh, super important for IVF in general. Um, I mean, living life in general. <laughs> so I bought myself a whole bunch of water bottles and that was really helpful, like reusable ones. And I just filled them up with filtered water and had them in my fridge and was just like going through them like crazy. <laughs> and so that was really important, especially during the like suppression phase and stuff like that where swelling isn't as much of an issue. <clears throat> where, you know, when you're in risk for OHSS, they say, you actually don't want to like drink a ton of water, you want to drink a ton of like Gatorade and coconut water and electrolytes. So, um, but through everything else, like water is super important. And so I made sure I had lots of good reusable water bottles that I could fill up with filtered water, have in the fridge ready to go, and just use that. But that's it for now, guys. What IVF tips did you find helpful? Are you guys going through a cycle right now? And I wish you all the best if you are. <laughs> and good luck with everything. Hopefully you guys get your miracle babies just like we got ours. And that's it for now, guys. If you like, subscribe. Bye.